and amen. You may be seated in God's presence. Hallelujah. Brother Doug, can we get some lights in the house? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I got a word in my spirit today, my brothers and sisters. It's been kind of stirring in me for about three months, and um, this week it just really, 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 really began to burn in my spirit, and I believe today I'm probably preaching to myself. If nobody else needs to hear it, I'm going to let you all know right now. I need to hear this. Tommy Perry, I need to hear this message today. I'm going to be preaching to myself. I, I hope and I'm believing that there's going to be others in this sanctuary and people watching through Facebook and YouTube that this message is for them as well. But I'm just going to let you know, when I'm preaching, I'm going to preach to myself today. And even yesterday when I was studying and looking over my notes, I began to just break down and weep and cry because there's a section in here that I know the Lord's talking to me about. And so, again, every time I teach or every time I preach, it's, it's about what the Lord is dealing with me about. Amen. That's probably why I don't do like a series of, te- of preaching on Sundays. I want to be led by the Spirit of God. So um, most times, if you ever hear me preach on a Sunday, it's because it's what the Lord's dealing with me about. And I believe if I'm human and I'm flesh and I got issues and I got this going on, probably some of y'all do too. So I Pray in Jesus' name it's going to bless you as much as it has blessed me to study and prepare for this message. Amen. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. I'm going to be reading out of the NIV today. Psalm 23. A Psalm of David. Here we go. Verse number one. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray. Father, I pray every one of us in this house and everyone watching would have a revelation of you being our good shepherd and that we would never be in want. And even though you take us through valley seasons, it's not to hurt us, it's not to harm us. It's to take us somewhere better. So I pray right now your anointing be heavy upon all of us upon me preaching and upon the ones listening. I pray God right now, become our good shepherd. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Psalm 23, this passage of Scripture is so well known. And it, in fact, as far as a passage of Scripture, it might be the most famous, most popular, the most well-known passage of Scripture across the globe. Not only do Christians read this, it's read even by unbelievers, especially at funeral services. The first time I ever heard Psalm 23 was read at a funeral, and I've preached it at funeral services. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's so much life and so much revelation in Psalm 23 that I think we do a disservice if we just talk about it, teach it, or preach it at a funeral service. That's why the Lord is having me teach it and preach it today at Catch the Fire Church. Can I get an amen? 
I pray with the Lord's help, I take us all on a journey through these six scriptures of Psalm 23. I'm going to do a little bit different style of preaching than I normally do today. Normally, I'll read one verse or a passage of scripture, and then I'll just take off and start preaching. But today, these six verses, I really want to go through, kind of like I did on Wednesday night with Pastor Connor through the book of Revelation. I want to I want to go through line by line these six verses because so many people in the church, they have, no under, they have no idea or no understanding of what David is even referring to or what David is even talking about. So right now, with the Lord's help, I'm going to give you a little background. I'm going to lay a foundation, and then we're going to dig in and get into these six verses. Are you all okay with that? <clears throat> all right. Psalm 23, it says right here, it's a psalm of David, so it was written by King David, and King David had an understanding what it meant to be like to be a shepherd, because in David's earlier years, he was a shepherd boy. If you know anything about the Word of God, David was a shepherd boy, and he tended to his father's flock. And here in Psalm 23, it is probably a little bit later on in David's life, and David had experiences with God where God provided for him, where God protected him, where God made provision for him and with him having all these experiences David turns this psalm into a a a a a a teaching if you will for us today saying that he himself David is a sheep and God is the shepherd because he had an understanding what it meant to be a shepherd over a flock so David starts out Psalm 23 speaking about the Lord. He's talking about the Lord. And then in verse number four, he flips it around and he starts talking to the Lord. So he's talking about the Lord and then he starts talking to the Lord. And Psalm 23 is very, very, very personal. And uh, when I'm reading this and going through these scriptures with you today, I want you to look at the wording that David used when he wrote Psalm 23 and penned these words. Because there's no references here found in Psalm 23 of words like we or us or they. But he used words like me and my and I and you. Why did he do that? David had an intimate relationship with God Almighty. He, he, he made it so intimate, and this is why he wrote Psalm 23, because of his past experiences of where God has delivered him and how God kept him. And there's something powerful when you realize how God has kept you out of harm from the enemy. Can I get a witness right now? When you understand the goodness of God, hallelujah, and when you understand how he's kept you, if he, we sung it earlier, if he was faithful then, he'll be faithful now. When you have that true understanding and that intimacy of God, you can say things like, the Lord is my shepherd. Can I get an amen right now? David used this because of an intimacy that he had with his God. This psalm, Psalm 23, reveals God's protection and God's provision and his love for David. And again, yes, David wrote these words, but I believe it's for us. God allowed it to be in his holy word, and I believe it's relevant for us today. Can I get an amen? And what I love about Psalm 23, this passage of Scripture, David fully is convinced and David fully believes when he wrote these words that he has a complete trust in God Almighty. He has full confidence in God. That's powerful. you got to get this in your spirit before we even move on. David wrote these words and he had full trust and he had full confidence in his God that he was going to deliver him, that he was going to keep him, that he was going to protect him. Come on, somebody. Somebody needs to hear this word right now. Woo. David had a relationship with God. David heard the Lord, Lord's voice. He followed his leading, and, and he, he was there and saw how the Lord cared for him, and he had experienced the, the love of God, the forgiveness of God, the grace and mercy of God. He experienced God's protection. God is David's sole passion and desire. David trusted the Lord. David trusted God on the mountaintop experiences, and David trusted the Lord even through the valley of the shadow of death. Psalm 23, if I could just say it in one word, it's this, trust. 
trust. Psalm 23 is about trusting in the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm preaching a message titled this today, The Shepherd's Leading. The Shepherd's Leading. Fist bump your neighbor on your right and on your left and say, The Shepherd's Leading. And like always, I encourage you to take notes. If you are a note taker, please take notes. If you just take mental notes, take mental notes. So if you have a pen and paper, get it out. If you got your iPad, get it out. If you take notes on your iPhone, get it out. Because I want you to take a lot of notes today. That way you can go back and look at this and say, oh, yeah, I remember when Pastor Kyle preached this because it impacted me and it changed my life. Because I believe these six verses will change your life. Can I get an amen? The word of God, if you will allow, it will change your life. Oh, let me say that again. The word of God, if you allow it, it will change your life. Verse number one. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. David declared right here in verse number one. The Lord is my shepherd. Somebody say my shepherd. He didn't say the Lord is a shepherd. He didn't say the Lord is your shepherd. He said the Lord is my shepherd. He made it personal. The Lord is my shepherd. And when you have a relationship with God Almighty, and I pray to God every person in this place does, when you have a relationship with God Almighty, you will know him as my shepherd. My shepherd. He is my shepherd, but guess what? I believe he's Doug Moffat's shepherd. I believe he's Levi's shepherd. I believe he's Mackenzie Blackerby's shepherd. But you can make it personal and say, he is my shepherd. John 10, Jesus begins to speak and he says that he is the good shepherd. And this, his, he knows his sheep and his sheep know him. And, and the sheep will hear his voice and begin to follow after him. And even though he is the good shepherd and leading and guiding and protecting, Jesus said in John 10 that he would lay down his life for the flock, for his sheep. And when you have an intimacy with God, knowing that he is protecting you and that he has laid down his life for you, you can make it personal because that's what this is about. It's about a personal relationship with King Jesus. He is our good shepherd. Amen. Amen. And when you have an intimate relationship with the Lord, he will be your shepherd and you will want to follow his ways. Can I get an amen right now? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. David declares that because of God being his shepherd, he would never, ever be in want. I believe some people at Catch the Fire Church and those watching on Facebook today, you need to get this in your spirit. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. David, knowing that intimacy that he had, God being his shepherd, that he was going to provide for him, that he would never, ever, ever be in want. And when you have a relationship with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, that good shepherd, you will never, ever be in lack. Can I get a witness right now? When you have a relationship with your good shepherd by the name of Jesus. You'll never be in want. You'll never be in need. This good shepherd is known as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God that provides. Somebody needs to realize that God is your provider. Your government is not your provider. Your workplace is not your provider. It is good God Almighty. He is the good shepherd and he is your provider. Can I get a witness right now? Ooh. And this is what a good shepherd will do. He'll provide for his flock. A good shepherd supplies for his flock. Can, can I get a witness right now? Some of you are wondering how you're going to make it another day. Some of you are wondering how you're going to pay this bill or pay that bill or how you're going to get by just another day. Let me just prophesy and speak to you in this house today. Your good shepherd has a name, and it is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God that provides. One, two, three, four people in this house believed what I just said. I'm going to say it one more time because... I, I, I'm preaching better than most of you are letting on. 
Because I'm preaching truth. Amen. That should make somebody excited. When I say that your good shepherd has a name, and it's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provideth for you. So let me say it again. Some of you are wondering how you're going to make it another day. Some of you are wondering how you're going to pay this bill and get through this thing called life. But I'm here to tell you right now, he is the good shepherd and he will supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God that provides. Can I get a witness in this house right now? Thank you. This is what it should be like at Catch the Fire Church. Amen. I about said something, but we're live. So I got to be nice. Don't want to downgrade. Don't want to talk bad about anybody. Praise the Lord. Verse number two. He, 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 he's still, he's talking about the good shepherd. He's talking about God. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside quiet waters. My brothers and sisters, verse number two is so symbolic to resting in the Lord Jesus Christ and having a peace and having an assurance that he will protect you at all times. Jesus is our rock. He's our firm foundation. He is our help in a time of need. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run to it and are safe. As a child of God, of being one of His sheep, so to speak, we must learn to rest in His presence. Some of you are running this race called life and you're busy with work and busy with kids and busy with this and that and it list the list could go on and on and on you need to learn to rest in the presence of God I'm preaching to myself right now and when you rest in the presence of God it's trusting that he is there and he's accomplishing what he wants done in your life when you're just resting and trusting in him knowing that no matter what happens in your life, no matter what you're going through, you can find a peace in every situation. Mm, somebody needs to hear that. I'm going to say that again. Resting in God is trusting that he is there and knowing that no matter what you're going through, you can find a peace in every situation. Even when you lose a loved one. Even when you're going through a sickness or the battle of your life or a fiery furnace, you can trust and rest in him and have an assurance that he is there with you in every situation. Come on, somebody. Can I get an amen right now? Isaiah the prophet, he wrote some words and he said, I have peace like a river. Why would he say something like that? And why would David say he leads me beside quiet waters? I don't know about anybody else in here, but water seems to be tranquil. And, 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 and water, streams, or ocean, or even lakes, just even a beautiful pond that's manicured with landscaping around it. It's so peaceful, and you can just sit and relax and take a deep breath and just kind of let it all out and just sit there and relax. This is why David used these words. He leads me. Beside still waters, quiet waters. It's all about resting in Him. Life is chaotic. Can I get an amen? Sunday mornings can be chaotic. Come on, we got to hurry up, get dressed. Come on, let's go brush your teeth. Did you brush your teeth? I hope you put on deodorant. Praise God. You know, you know what I'm saying? Anybody know what I'm saying? Yeah. Come on, we're going to be late. We better hurry. Amen. Amen. Listen, David wants us to realize that we can rest in the, in the Lord. Can I get an amen? 
Look at verse number three. It's a continuation on. So in verse two, he said, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters, comma. And it goes on to say, he restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He restores my soul. Please hear your pastor today. God renews. God restores, God refreshes, and God revives. And he is the only one that can restore your soul. No drug, no drink, no high, no job, no relationship, no amount of money. Only Jesus can restore your soul. Somebody say only Jesus. Only G, only Jesus can bring times of refreshing. Only Jesus can bring a renewal to your spirit. Only Jesus restores your soul. Those things may make you happy. The party in the nightclubs, sleeping around, having lots of money. But let me tell you right now, that's all temporal. It only lasts for a season. It only lasts for a while. But one thing that remains, that is having a love for Jesus Christ, his love for you, and he will restore your soul. And nobody else can do it except him. Can I get a witness in this house right now? Only God can restore your soul. He and he alone is the only one that can restore your soul for all eternity. Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly what that's meaning is he come to give you life here on this earth and he come to give you eternal life can i get a witness in this house Woo! and the verse goes on to say he guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake he guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake once again david is painting a portrait of God being our shepherd. And when we surrender to Him, completely, truly, 100% surrender to Him, He will guide, guide you. He will lead you into a life of holiness. Can I get an amen? And that life of holiness is only found in Jesus Christ. And when you, I just feel like saying this, when you truly have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you will want to live a righteous life. You will want to live a holy life. You won't want to do some of those things that you used to do. Can I get a witness right now? When you truly know God as your personal Lord and Savior and you know Him as the Good Shepherd and you know that you have that intimacy with Him, and you say you love him, you will want to praise him. You'll want to want to worship him. You'll want to pray more. You'll want to fast more. You'll want to get to church more. You'll want to dig into the word more. You will want to, want to live a holy life that is pleasing to the Lord. Can I get a witness right now? And I'm just going to be straight up honest. I'm not here to judge anybody, but I got a problem when people call themselves Christian, but they act more like the devil on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, than some of the people living out in the world. Act in certain ways, saying certain things, living like this and living like that. I, I'm just being honest with you. I got a question. If you, if you truly have a relationship with God and you truly know him as your good shepherd. Because if you do, you'll want to live a righteous life. You'll want to live a holy life that is pleasing to God. Mm. Mm. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Everybody all right? All right. So now we get to verse number four, and this is where David flips it. And instead of talking about God, he starts talking to God. Whew. I'm going to do my best not to cry. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, why would sheep 
be walking through a valley that seems unsafe in the natural. I read this verse at least seven or eight times sitting on my couch in Effingham, Illinois, even though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death. I read it. And I read it again and I read it again and I wondered why. Why, if God is the good shepherd, why would his sheep be walking through a valley? And here's the answer. It's because the good shepherd led him there. Did you hear that? The good shepherd led him there. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it goes on to say, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Why would God Almighty, the good shepherd, lead his sheep through a valley where it may seem difficult at the moment? Why would the good shepherd lead his sheep through a valley where it seems uncomfortable for a season? I'm preaching to somebody that needs to hear this right now. Why? Why? Why would our good shepherd lead you through a valley? Why? Why? Here's the answer, baby. Get ready. It's to take you to a better place. God's ways are above our ways. His thoughts are above our thoughts. Either you trust him or you don't. I'm preaching to myself right now. Either you trust him or you don't. The good shepherd is leading David through the valley of the shadow of death. If you're like me, you love those mountaintop experiences. Because when you're on the mountaintop, you can see for miles and miles and you, you can look in all directions and you feel safe and you, you feel close to God. And you can see those attacks from the enemies coming and you can prepare for those attacks. Oh, you ain't hearing me right now. We all love those mountaintops. But, you're, but when you're in the valley, please hear me. When you're in a valley season, you'll find out who you are, you'll find out whose you are, and you'll learn to trust the Lord. It's in those tough seasons, my brothers and sisters, when you're in the valley, is when you realize how awesome and amazing God truly is. I wrote this down because I felt in the spirit the Lord put this in me yesterday. It's in the valley season that the Lord seems to reveal himself in a deeper manner. It's in the valley when you learn to trust him with all of your heart. Yea, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me somebody needs to get that in your spirit right now you may be walking through a valley season and you may have attacks coming your way but you're not going to let fear grip you why because he is right by your side i wish somebody would preach with me in this house right now you might be in a valley season but god's right next to you you might be in a dark season of your life but god is right by your side the bible says that he will never leave you nor forsake you that is a promise from god and the promises of god are yes and amen so in 2022 i'm going to let my yeses be in agreement with God's yeses, and I'm going to let my amens be in agreement with his amens. Can I get a yes and an amen in this house right now? Woo! Yea, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil because you are with me. When you're walking through that valley of it's unfamiliar and it may seem like a dark shadow is trying to hover over you. But please hear me and I'm about to run a lap in this house right now. If there is a shadow, that means there's a light shining from some. Oh, come on somebody. If, the, woo, if, there, is a sh if there is a shadow, Brother Doug, that lets me know there is a light shining. God is the light of the world. Are you hearing me right now? You may be in a dark season of your life, but God... 
His light is still shining bright, and he is right by your side. Who am I preaching to in this house right now? Somebody might as well give him some praise. Because God is always good, and his light always shines. You may be in a valley season right now. You may be in a valley of despair, a valley of the unknown because of a doctor's report. You may be in a valley of financial calamity. You may be in a valley of decision, not, which, not knowing which way you're heading. But I'm here to tell you right now, beloved Jesus is right by your side. He sticks closer than a brother. He said he would never leave you. And he will never, ever, ever forsake you. My God. My God. My God. Stay close to the shepherd. Stay close to the shepherd. It may seem dark right now, but stay close to the shepherd. You may be in a valley season right now. Stay close to the shepherd. I'm preaching to somebody in this house right now. There's no valley that you will ever go through alone. No matter how dark, how bleak, how scary, how unfamiliar that valley may seem, you mark my words, my brothers and sisters in this house and those that are watching through Facebook and YouTube, you will never, ever go through that valley alone. Your shepherd, Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, he is leading you through that valley. Did you hear me? He is leading you through that the valley even though i walk through the valley of the all oh, you are you getting this in your spirit they're not camping out in the valley they're not throwing a pity party in the valley they're not staying stuck in the valley the good shepherd is leading you through somebody shout through 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 you got to get this in your spirit he is leading you through the valley and sometimes you got to go through it to get to something better. Are you hearing me right now? Woo! Trust him. Trust him. Trust him. Sometimes I thought about this early this morning when I was sitting by the fireplace by myself in the dark, sipping on some coffee. Yes, I'm having coffee for all you, you, uh, you, you fasting police. Woo, 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 pull over, pull over. I'm going to arrest you for drinking coffee, whatever. Heather wants me to drink coffee. Yes, I do. Can I get an amen? Praise the Lord. I got a little hangry the other day, and, and I must have smarted something off to her, and she said, you called me mister. She, she, did. she goes, now, mister? And when she said that, I was like, oh, snap, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I like food. But serious, this morning I was sitting there by the fire, sipping on my coffee, meditating on the Lord and thinking about this service today. Sometimes valleys are long, some valleys are longer than others. Sometimes the valley is short. There's only like one little cliff and you can maneuver through it. But then sometimes you look and you see mountains on each side and you're looking and that valley seems long. This is why it's so important to trust him. Stay close to him. Stay close to the rest of the flock. Because when you're going through a valley, you don't want to get isolated alone. Because that's what the enemy wants. Because when you get isolated alone, that's when he's going to attack. Oh, my God. This ain't my notes. It's Holy Ghost preaching. Stay close to the shepherd. Amen. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, it goes on to say, I will fear no evil for you are with me. And then I love the latter part of verse 4. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Let's talk about this rod for just a second. A shepherd's rod 
Some will say it was 18 inches. Some will say it was two feet. I don't know how big this thing was, but it was made of solid wood. had a handle about the size of this microphone, and it went out and had like a round ball knob on the end of it. And it was used for protection in case the enemy would try to come and snatch one of the little sheep out of the flock, one of the little lambs, if a wild animal or maybe even another human being from a separate tribe would try to come and snatch up one of the, the little lambs in that flock, that shepherd would take that rod as a weapon. Are you hearing me right now? The rod was used to defend the shepherd's flock. David wasn't afraid of the attacks of the enemy because David had full confidence in the Lord, knowing God was his protector. Remember earlier I started out saying David was a shepherd boy. David understood what it meant to shepherd a flock. He understood that, that, that attacks come, and it was up to the shepherd to defend the flock. He's writing from that perspective knowing that God is the shepherd and God himself is going to protect him. So he had full confidence in that. Yea, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil for you are with me. And then he goes on to say, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. It's all about protection. You may be going through that valley, but God's protecting you. Hmm. So along with this shepherd's rod was something called the staff. And if you're like me, I, I usually get a visual when I'm reading Scripture. And when I think of a shepherd in the Bible, maybe even shepherds in the Middle East now, I think of a guy standing there with a big robe on with this big, tall, slender wooden staff, and it had a crook and a hook at the end. Anybody ever seen a shepherd's staff like that? Yeah, well, that's symbolic, and it's so powerful, and it has so much meaning with this shepherd's staff. Hallelujah. So a shepherd would use the staff to guide his sheep. And let me tell you this. Shepherds are gentle. They're not goat herders. Goat herders are whipping and getting them all around and corralled up. But a shepherd, and I've had to learn that, y'all. I prayed, God, don't let me be a goat herder. So don't be a goat yeah, you're blaming it all on me, but uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> but shepherds are gentle, and they'll take that long staff and gently tap a little lamb on the side if they're seeming to stray off to the left or to the right and get them right back into the flock. And if they stray a little bit too far, they'll take the hook part, reach out, Picture this. This is so awesome about Jesus. If one of the sheep strays too far, he'll stretch out that staff with the hook and gently pull him in. And he doesn't just pull him into the flock. You know what he does? The shepherd will pull him in close to him where they are seeing him, feeling the touch. Oh, I feel like preaching right now. Feeling the touch of the shepherd. The smell. The intimacy. That's what that hook is for on that shepherd's staff. How awesome. How awesome is that? And it's also used when a little lamb may trip, stumble, and fall down. That shepherd will take his staff, hook that little baby lamb or that sheep, and pull it up. This is so symbolic. David is painting a portrait here of the love of Jesus Christ and what he does for us. Some of us, we know him as a good shepherd, but we kind of stumble sometimes and he'll pick you up. We'll stray to the left or to the right. And he'll gently, through the Holy Spirit, nudge you. Hey, I need to get back in the flock. Are you hearing me right now? It's a beautiful portrait of Jesus Christ keeping us walking that straight and narrow path and picking us up when we might fall, fall down and pulling us closer to him so we feel his love and know his protection. 
This is all about the leading of the good shepherd, Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse number five. Is everybody okay? Everybody okay? Can you give me like 10 more minutes? I don't know how long I've been preaching, but I really don't care. Praise God, because this is good. (laughs) He's still talking to God. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. What this is meaning is this. Even when attacks come, or there is evilness and darkness in this world all around me, I can set an absolute confidence knowing that God will provide for me. God will care for all of my needs, and I can have complete intimate fellowship with Him. Can I get an amen right now? I don't have to have any other worries around me. I can pull up to that table, and I can dine, I can sup, I can eat, I can spend intimate time with the good shepherd, fully protected from him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the verse, verse number five goes on to say, you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Somebody say, this is about to get good. Oh, it's about to get good. I think it's been good, but it's going to get gooder here in just a minute. Amen. Shepherds would pour oil over their sheep's head to protect them against parasites and diseases. That oil was like a protective salve, a balm, a protective covering over the sheep. David understood this, and he understood if you follow after God, attacks are going to come your way. But I'm going to tell you right now, even though he was following after God and understood attacks was going to come his way, he understood if he was anointed, the attacks can still come because God is protecting him. So I just feel like telling somebody in this house right now, when you get anointed, come on somebody, you can boldly declare a thousand may fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. You can boldly Holy declare, no weapon formed against me will be able to prosper in every tongue that rises up against me. In judgment, God's going to shut their mouth. When you're anointed, his protection is upon you. I feel like telling somebody that right now. When you get anointed, his protection is upon you. Somebody ought to give him some praise right now. You anoint my head with oil. And my cup overflows. The King James said, my cup runneth over. And I want to just stop right there for a second because I've done some study on this and I've never heard anybody teach this. And if they have, I wasn't in the class. So I just thank the Lord for allowing me to get this and I'm ready to give it to all of you right now. My cup overflows. Hallelujah. Please hear me. On the road to Bethlehem is this huge stone well this thing is huge and right next to a well uh, to this well is something known as the shepherd's cup this thing is carved out and cut out of a piece of stone and it will hold 30 to 40 gallons of water and when shepherds are leading their flock through that region oh come on somebody they'll stop pump that water and it overflows 30 to 40 gallons to water their flock. David had an understanding of this. He didn't just pump a little water. God didn't just pump a little water. He said, no, no, no. He said, my cup overflows my cup runneth over what this is symbolic of is the blessings of our God can I get a witness right now his head was anointed with oil that's protection and his cup is overflowing somebody needs to realize you are blessed and highly favored of the Lord somebody ought to shout right now my cup runs over my cup runs over somebody needs to shout I'm blessed and highly favored Come on, shout it like you mean it. I am blessed and highly favored. Woo! Glory. Blessings and favor is upon you in the name of Jesus. You're anointed and your cup runs over. Mm. Look at the last verse here in Psalm 23, verse number 6. Surely goodness and love, some translations will say mercy, surely goodness and love will follow me Here he is, making it personal again. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Surely, 
Surely. Because I'm living for the shepherd, because I'm living for God Almighty, surely goodness and love, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. David boldly proclaimed that when you follow the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus, there will be a grace upon your life. No matter what happens in your life, you can say Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Goodness follows you when you serve Him. Let me say that again. I got two amens. Goodness follows you. When you, when you serve him. Amen. Hallelujah. Goodness and love follows me all the days of my life. This good shepherd that we serve, he has an unending and unfailing love. And his mercies are new every day. You might have messed up yesterday, but let me tell you, brothers and sisters, his mercies are new today. Praise God, they're going to be new tomorrow. They're going to be new new on Tuesday and Wednesday. His mercies are new every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David is painting a picture for us, and it's showing us that if we surrender to the leading of the Lord, and we trust Him, and we truly follow His ways, we would have the promise of dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. Again, this is all about Jesus Christ being the good shepherd. When we surrender to him and we follow his leading and we live a life for him and have that intimacy with him, we're guaranteed to be able to spend eternity with him forever and ever and ever and ever amen amen that's the promise the good shepherd makes can i get an amen if you would stand to your feet right now if we could dim the lights please i'm closing with this and please hear me Fix your eyes on Jesus. Don't look at your surroundings because that's what's going to cause you to stumble and fall. That's what's going to cause you to get off track, off path. Keep your eyes fixed on the good shepherd. He's the one leading you. He's the one guiding you. Trust him. Stick close to him. Trust that he knows the way to where you need to go. Mm. Are you hearing me? Trust that he knows what's best and he knows the right path to take to get you where you need to be.